Hey everybody, Karen the Warp Spinster here. Welcome to my channel and thanks for joining me today. I'm especially happy to have good company today. It has been raining for about 36 hours now and we love the moisture and it's not a downpour. We're not flooding or anything, but it would be good to see a little bit of sun someday soon. Today I want to try something a little different and as usual, I have no idea how it's going to work. For a while I've been doodling something around in my head to do with um, the rings of a tree trunk. Um, there's something about, I don't know, the, the rough edges, the bark outside and then the rings nice concentric rings on the inside and then occasionally you'll have the the splits in the wood but i want to focus mostly on the bark ring around it and then the inside rings now i decided to do it on black which i probably should do it on white in a gloomy day like this but i know some of you like dark backgrounds and i've been doing quite a lot of white so i chose black and i've got roughly a 12 and a half inch square minus shavings I did after I um, pressed it using water. So remember, if you use water and then press it, things are going to shrink because moisture and heat means fabric shrinks. So uh, it also is a size that you will be able to see on the screen. Now, originally in my head, I was being a little literal, a lot literal, and I was going to do it in browns and then do some some funky build-up things for the, the bark, which I think would be a fun art quilt. Don't get me wrong, but that's not what I want to do this time. So I want to start with a nice, bold, colorful print. That's one of the reasons I chose black. And I pulled out a few choices here from leftover 10 inch squares from a cafe packet and there are some things that i want to take into consideration as i'm doing this so first of all these are going to be rings cut out of them so i want to be mindful of how that print is going to look when it's cut in a ring um, the circle will be in the center will be cut out and also the size of the print doesn't matter so much because with these big bold prints you just go with what you've got and i didn't want anything small and fussy with this the other consideration is colors now this particular collection has a limited color palette and i am wanting to do a total of three rings so there will be one that is this wild print, and then there will be two more that are solid colors. So I want to be mindful of what kind of contrast I might want with those colors, as well as um, how the print will look in a ring. Now, this one, I really like this one. I'm not sure that the ring is going to be, I'm trying to picture it through here so and then another ring around here and it's going to look stripey going through so i think probably not that one this one at least has two directions but i still think it's going to look too stripey so probably not that one and it's down to these two, both of which have a circular sort of look to begin with. My question about this one is, if I am, if I just do say this as a ring and I cut that size, then this is going to get cut out in the center. And that's one of the things I like about this print. So then, ooh, that would be kind of fun, wouldn't it? To picture it without that ring in the, the center. So, that's actually a possibility. I will lose that, that bit in the center, but I will have these pieces out here, and I'm going to fuse applique this, so I'm not going to lose those on the edges to a seam. So it is a possibility. And then we have this floral piece, which is sort of round by nature. 
actually sort of a ring by nature. And if we do something like that, I'll lose that center flower. Hmm. So I'm not sure. I kind of like the colors here. I can have that contrast of the, the orange and the blue. These are, are hmm, oh, similar value, I guess. Somehow they, it's not as much contrast between them, which is lovely, but not necessarily what I'm looking for. So I think I am going to go with this. And I want this to be maybe a quarter of this piece because I'll have two more, maybe a little more than that. I'll have two more rings, but they're going to be smaller and off to one side. So this is going to be asymmetrical. And I will have one, two, three, basically, color choices for what goes around here. The yellow is all going to be probably hidden, depending on how we cut it. So what I'm going to do is get out some fusible web and draw a circle the size that I want which will be the inner circle. And then I'm going to draw kind of a rough outline, which would be the bark on the outside. And I don't have to mimic that exactly so I can make it a pretty, pretty wild or a pretty calm <laughs> set of, of jagged edges. Now I am going to be stitching, uh, doing probably a, a zigzag close to a satin stitch around it, but I think I'm going to do that in invisible thread on the outside. So I'll use a, a Monopoly from Superior Threads. But I think the inside ring, actually, I want to do in a matching or contrasting thread, not an invisible thread, because that's the start of the rings, and I'm going to want to to stitch in some rings on the inside. So I guess I will just draw the outside as the spirit moves me. So I'm going to uh, draw in the first ring, which will be the center of it. It may not be that size, however. I do want, well, I do want a sizable amount of room to do some stitching inside. So this looks like it might be about the right size. So I will draw the circle around here and then I will come back and show you what I've done and then we'll we can apply it to the fabric and cut it out. Here's what I have drawn on the paper side of the fusible web. I've rough cut it with paper scissors and I could cut out the center ring or but I have chosen to leave it on. If I cut out the center ring that means I would have unfused fabric that I could use to um, in something else that I don't want to be fused back. But I think in this case, who knows what else I might want to do on this piece. Maybe I'll want some, some smaller circles or something scattered around it. So I think I will, in fact, want to have it. So now, I hope you can see at least a little bit. This has to be fused on the back, of course. So but I think I can still kind of see how it will look. So this is the part that's going to show, remember. So I like having this bit up here. And these pieces are going to be lost unless I shift things some more. I really kind of like this sort of effect, though. So, oops, that's too far over. That won't work, Karen. And this will still give me some, um, some of that orange, but I've still got some of this radiating stuff going on. And it's probably not going to matter a great deal because it is a pretty small part of this whole piece. So I am going to press that on. 
this over for you. Not that this is anything you don't already know how to do, but saves me from having to stop and start the camera because you know sometimes <laughs> I can't even get that right. All right. So about there. And I like to kind of just do it do an overall to get it gently placed so I don't end up shifting things while I'm doing this. And remember this is not meant to hold this down forever. It's not the only means of applying it to the fabric. So next I'm going to cut this out. You don't need to watch me do that and I will be back and we can fuse it then to the black. And here's our ring cut out. I was careful when I cut out the center to do my, my piercing cut off to the side so I've got a good sized circle rather than pinching it in the middle and clipping it. And before I take this paper off, I also wanted to show you that I did actually, because I rough cut it, I could cut um, outside of the lines that I drew because I decided I wanted to try to bring in a little more of this outside ring. This um, is beginning to look like a solar eclipse or something, isn't it? <laughs> Whoops. So now I can take the paper off and fuse it. Now the reason I turned it is because I'm going to have two other circles around here. And so I want some emphasis over here, something for the eye to travel up to see over here. Um, after there, I don't know where the focus is going to be, if it's going to be on these two rings in the end or up here, but either way, I want the eye to have something to travel to up in this corner. I'll bring this out a little bit. So I'm going to take off the paper and to do that, I just take a pin and score on the back so I'm not pulling and therefore raveling the edges. And I will come back after I've done this because it's going to stick to me <laughs> statically. And that will take right. a while. I'm leaving some around the edge here for a seam um, or a binding, depending on how this ends up. And I'm not going to fuse over on this side. I'm going to fuse on this side, but not this one because I want the option to tuck the other circles underneath, the other rings. So I won't have a full ring probably. I will cut off some of it so that this one overlaps the other two. So I want to avoid, ouch, there's the iron. I want to avoid fusing on that side so that I can overlap them a bit. All right, now, before I start stitching elsewhere then, that means I have to make some decisions about those circles. So I'm going to pull some solids in these colors. I'll see what I have here, but I think I may have to run down to my stash and pull three different colors. I do have some yellow showing, so I could do yellow but I will bring up some yellow, some orange, and some of this blue-purple and see what we think about those with this fabric. These are the three fabrics in my stash that came the closest, so I brought those up. And almost thinking those two the yellow, it is that yellow, but it sort of brings it down. And I'll be stitching rings in here, and there's no reason I couldn't use yellow in there to start to pull that out a little bit. But I think that's, part of it's the camera. Know that this is a little brighter than what the camera shows, but I don't know, I'm still not sure, I think. 
The blue brings in some cool and the rest is very warm. I kind of like all three of them. Hmm. Here's the thing. Um, I can bring in the yellow in the stitching, but I could also end up putting some little dots of it around too, because this isn't looking much like a tree ring, is it? <laughs> it's looking more like a solar flare or something. Oh, a flare would, oh, we could have a flare coming off. Solar flare probably wouldn't be, but we aren't going to be literal, right? No literality here. Literalness, whatever. The orange, mm, that orange just isn't quite right. It needs to be more red. And I'm going to have trouble finding that. Maybe I need to go look in my red stash, see if I can find an orangish red, because I really think it's more red than orange. Um, it actually almost looks better on the screen than it does in real life. Okay, I'm headed down to find a better orange. I blame my laps on my stuffy head. <laughs> I really wanted to match this rather. There's nothing wrong with matching that orange, but I think just for sheer impact, I wanted to match this. This was right on top of the pile I was looking at. I have no idea what I was thinking. Do I want to bring in that bit of cool? I guess I could see if that orange, which I've now put away, how those two would look together and just make it a really focused on those two colors. I'm not sure about what I don't want a little bit of this cool in, so I think I'll do these two. This almost looks fluorescent um, on the screen. It's a little less so in real life. But I think I will do my two other circles with that. I may drop in some of this and some orange later on when we see how it all balances out. So I want maybe a ring here and a smaller ring here, or a ring here and a smaller one up there. Probably more weight toward the bottom. I'm calling this the bottom for no particular reason. And so, I want to look at ultimate size here. So if that's the inside of the ring, and I overlap it, I'm still not gonna have much around there. So this could have more around the outside. It's a little hard to visualize because this is going to have the jagged outside. This is just the inside of the ring. Not sure if I want these to overlap or not. I think those are about the same size. Yep. So this will be this color and this will be this color. So my next step is to cut the pieces um, out of the fusible web and fuse into the back of the fabric. It occurred to me while I was cutting these that it might be interesting to explore cross sections of different vegetables. Like this looks to me like a cross section of a, I keep wanting to say butternut squash, acorn squash, which is one of my favorites. But that's something for another day. Right now, I think I like this arrangement where these two aren't intersecting and they're both down to bring some weight so that it grounds it a bit. And now, you know how far over I fused, I can lift it up a bit. Oh, those will go under. I'm going to probably trim a little bit off there just so I don't have all that bulk there. Or do I want them on top? Maybe one underneath and one on top. Maybe both on top. Now I'm used to both of them on top. Yikes. I do these things to myself. I think this one wants to be for sure. Do I want to do that? Could make it, I guess, an interlocking thing. 
I like that. Who'd have thunk it? Might make the rings inside a little interesting. Maybe I need to do the ring inside before, but I've got this ring to do. So I could do it over the tops of these or stop there. Boy, I'm gonna have to think that through, but I do like this. Hmm. That would certainly make the rings a lot easier. But I like it better that way. Sorry. <laughs> then I'll have to figure out how I'm going to do the stitching on the rings, but that's all right. It, because it also occurred to me that these, the yellow, like I thought I might want to drop some pieces around for balance which I think might still be true, but there's no reason that I couldn't drop some yellow onto just some little bits or stitch some little bits of yellow onto this to bring in a bit of yellow, which I think would be nice just to get a little, or maybe of that orange, just a little something up there. I don't mind asymmetry at all, but maybe a little something up there. Okay, I'm going to go for it. Gonna fuse these babies down and then I'll be back. One of the options that I have to enable me to sew those circles would be to leave this unfused so that I could lift it up and do that and then lift this up and do that. But That means that, sorry, pause for thinking. That means that the edges are more likely to start rattling. Um, I could leave the paper on the back or put some paper on back there, but I'm just going to go ahead with this as a problem to, to solve later because sometimes that's when you come up with the best ideas. So, Ready to fuse these down, I think. Okay, it's now or never. I'm committed now. Also want to do start doing the stitching around the edges partly to keep it from rattling and partly while I ponder what I'm going to do <laughs> about the rings now I could hand stitch the rings which would be kind of fun it would give it more of um, texture and a little more gravitas if I hand stitch them. So that's certainly an option and I like hand stitching. I could throw beads on, I mean, I could do all kinds of things. One thing I want to do though, for the moment is just to cut, oh, look at this. I already have some fusible web on this yellow. Isn't that interesting? Well, I'm gonna cut just a few snippets of yellow to scatter around and see how that looks. This is not very fully fused over here, I have to say. All right, so I'm not, oh, see about some square kind of snippets, just because everything else is so circular. It looks a little washed out on the screen. So you may be seeing it as more of a green than a yellow, but you know, possibility to start to fill in some of those spaces, which could also be done with stitching for sure. I am going to take a break. I need to run up to the quilt shop to get some things, which 
I didn't know I needed when I went the other day. So I am going to do that before they close. And then at some point this weekend, I will sit down and start to do some stitching. So you see what I have in mind, but I actually like it this way. This is, is better than I had pictured it, actually. I like this, this color scheme with lots of warm, but a little bit of cool as well. And little little bits of yellow showing through. I wonder what it would look like if we put little bits of yellow. Well, littler bits than that. On, say, the orange. Eh, maybe. We'll see. Let me know what you think. There's always time to do that later, if need be. Or if so desired. And of course, I have to start thinking about colors that I want to use for the stitching inside and hope that I have something vaguely resembling that. <laughs> I could do the same color to unify everything, but I think the color scheme unifies it enough that I don't have to worry so much about that. But I might want to, say, put blue or yellow in here and one of the warm, or the, yes, one of the warm colors here, cool color here, warm color here, <clears throat> and then mix in some yellow or whatever. Probably not white. I gave some fleeting thought to white, maybe a dark gray. There's, a, this is a dark gray around here. Um, just about anything except black will contrast with black. So I think we're on our way. I will see you later. Let me know in the comments what you think about the the yellow sprinkles. Oh, if we do them as sprinkles, like rounded little sprinkles. Ooh, all right. Here's a little piece. We'll make it an ice cream sundae kind of sprinkle, maybe. If you think I'm bad at cutting circles on camera, just wait till you see my sprinkle. I'm shedding lint and threads everywhere. Okay, now that's better than the squares, don't you think? Definitely like that better. I may still not want to do it, but I think I like it better than the squares. Anyway, let me know what you think, and I'll be back. I'm back. This may not look like I've done much work from your point of view, but it has had some things worked on. First of all, I stitched the outside of all of them with Monopoly thread and also with this in the bobbin. I noticed when I was doing, uh, when I was working with this in the bobbin, I had to tighten the tension on the bobbin a little bit. Now, I, I would think that perhaps you would want the opposite so that you're not pulling too hard on that, but it kept slipping out of the tension on the bobbin case, so tightened up the tension a bit and it took care of that problem. And then I decided to do different things on the inside of the rings. So this one is just strictly uh, a, I think I used this thread, just strictly a near satin stitch zigzag on this one and left it at that. This one I did a near satin zigzag. Wasn't really happy with the quality of it. I tried just doing a straight stitch on the machine around it and that helped a little bit. But then I decided that it looked unbalanced somehow. Let me move in a bit here. And so I opted to do some hand stitching with the big stitch around it, and that helped a lot. Somehow, uh, just the zigzag was, I don't know, somehow the outer edge didn't look right. It was very strange. Can't explain it exactly, but that seems to have taken care of the problem. Plus any unevenness in my stitching because I am not the world's best zigzag, uh, zigzag, satin stitcher on machine. Working on it, but I'm certainly not there. Then that helped to even that out a bit. Then on this one, I decided that I would just do 
monopoly in both the top and bobbin threads and it worked fine. I, it's got enough going on. I didn't need any enhancement or extra texture or anything because the print has enough going on. So then I started doing some straight stitching in a circle and I used my circles from my long arming to get some exact stitches, shortened my stitch length a little bit on my machine so that I could make some of these tighter circles going around. And the blue didn't show up too much. It's showing up better on camera, frankly, than it, <laughs> it does in real life. So I decided that I wanted to introduce yellow, so I used a, a pearl cotton. Was that probably a five, maybe? to do some stitching in this one. Now I'm not finished doing the inside circles on any of these, but um, I'm at a place where I need to start working on some other things for a little while. So uh, this is it for now. I'm still leaving open the possibility of doing the little sprinkly things in yellow. Not sure yet. I want to finish doing whatever I'm doing with the circles in here before I start thinking about other things. I'm liking this a lot, honestly, and I think, I don't know, I might try doing some different blocks, but it might just be a piece on its own. That is it for today. Next week uh, will probably be a little bit different video because it will be a holiday celebration week for me. and. Whatever holiday or season you may celebrate, I wish you a happy, joyful, and peaceful one. I will be doing some updates next week on what other things that I've been working on. And it's not going to be a how-to kind of video. Um, just kind of show you what I'm doing. Some of you had asked for updates on what I did for Sheila's class. And I have a couple other things to show you too. So wishing you the best joy and peace of the season. And I will see you next time. Be well, be safe, be happy, be quilting. Peace out. <laughs>